Hey, what up, everybody out there, dudes and dudettes, it's Michael Eaton and Zach Watson, and we are Two Dudes Review, and we just saw Angry Birds 2, so we're giving you a little heads up, there's going to be a little bit of spoilers, and plus, it's take two for us, because apparently we can't live stream on YouTube just yet, so we're going to look into that and find out what's going on, but anyway, you guys want to know what we think about this movie, uh, it's not god-awful, and it's also not the best, but I will warn you, Facebook's quality and YouTube's quality are going to be a little different so we can get some stuff sorted. Mm -hmm. So if you watch the YouTube side, we're going to try to see if we can just switch out the videos at a later point. But right now, this, we're working with what we got. Yep. And now, back to the actual review. Yep. Like he said, it's not the worst and it's not the best. It's... It's definitely in between. There's some good things in this. There's some smart jokes. But, but there's also a lot of jokes that make you question who the hell is writing it. Yeah, and who the hell is directing this movie. Because there's a lot of very questionable scenes and a lot of questionable dialogue. And then the the animation itself, it's super pretty, super detailed. And, su and super energized. But it's there's a lot of times there was far more kill faces than I would have liked to see in my Angry Birds movie. Yeah. Like, there was literally a scene where Chuck, the speedster of the team, or whatever you want to call him. Voiced by Josh Gad. He uh, he was introducing us to their brainiac side of their new team, who happened to be his sister. Mm -hmm. Well, he tells the, the entire team not to touch or anything because it's his sister, mm -hmm. and then it's decide the movie just decides, cinematography-wise, to zoom in on his face and give him this ever darkening and deepening evil voice like like don't touch my sister like that is it's terrifying like it's, bad. it's terrifying it's i mean some of this animation is scary as all sin and then it's, it's the fact that there was butts there's lots of butts in here like we could literally go and take an entire episode and break it down scene by scene and we can do like what James A. Janice does on his Dead Meat channel. Only mm -hmm. instead of kills, we measure the butts. How many butts does this movie show you? Oh, well this movie showed us 14 butts. <laughs> and most of it's the pigs. Like if we went back in there, rewatched the movie and counted them, I guarantee you we would have almost 20 different butts counted up from just the pigs alone. Yeah. It's depressing. It's also sad it's cheap it's manipulative like i know kids think butts are funny if you're a little kid you look at a big fat butt and you're, you're gonna laugh your butt off yeah literally <laughs> it just happens i mean we we were immature we were laughing at that kind of stuff when we were younger but nowadays we look at it and think wow we laughed is, at that that is some juvenile stuff like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we sure matured yeah <laughs> Oh, you want, and also you want evidence that this movie is dated. I'm going to tell you, there is a scene where Bomb is trying to distract these security guards. So what does he do? He takes them to a bar, okay? And they start singing Baby Shark. Now, the build-up to the actual bar scene was pretty hilarious because you got your stereotypical action movie. You got your team, your explosives, blah, blah, blah. Well, they tell Bomb, hey, take out the guards for us. All right, seems simple enough. He's going to go and do his thing. Blow them up, and they're going to be unconscious for the rest of the movie. No, he legitimately takes them to a bar and is partying with them and is having a great time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, even the scientist is having fun. They go over to him. He's got the tie on the top of his head. He's got a drink in his hand, and he's singing and dancing to the song. What song do they play? Baby Shark. Freaking Baby Shark. Baby Shark. <laughs> baby shark freaking baby shark why for the love of god do you play baby shark that dates your movie you, you and know, then on top of it on top of it in the first few seconds of the movie you mad you see red dabbing in the background who, yes it's just a picture of him but it's the fact they included dabbing something that's been dead who, for months who's who dabs anymore? Let me let us know in the comments who which one of you still dabs to this day. And who asked for it in the Angry Birds sequel? Yeah. In a sequel! Uh, you know what? That's that bar scene could have been worse. The bar scene was great until the baby yeah. shark song played. Yo, what could have, you know what would have made it more insufferable, especially for you? Hmm. Is if they played Old Town Road. God, by that would have been worse. X. 
That would have made it so much worse. <laughs> I'm going to take my heart. I, I swear to God, if I, anybody recuts it and does that to it and sends it to us. Yeah. One, I give you chops for doing that. Yeah. Two. You are very creative. Two. You will see me pull such a such a very explosive gasket. You'll be thinking, "Oh God, I've unleashed a beast of a human." You unleashed a demon if you do that. I hate that song with a burning passion. I, Nothing against the artist who created it, except Billy Ray Cyrus. He lost a lot of respect for me. Oh, uh, he lost a lot of respect for me when he gave birth to Miley. Lil Nas or whatever his name is. Lil Nas X, yeah. Yeah, I never had respect for him to begin with, but so yeah. we're okay. But still, why would you play? Baby Shark in a bar because this song is made for kids. Well, you gotta think this movie's made for kids, and apparently they think the adults seeing this are kids too who go to bars and sing Baby Shark because freaking Baby Shark. It's still not funny. It doesn't have to be funny. They're making money. They made money from us because of the song, because of the movie. But oh. Yeah, we, I mean, we still haven't even gotten into the plot of this movie. <laughs> I don't even want to touch the plot anymore with all the things we've already I mean, covered. Like, my God. It, I mean, so the basic plot of this movie is Red is basically being praised as a hero because of events of the last movie, basically saving the eggs from the pigs. And now there's a third island who is causing havoc for both the birds and the pigs. So what do they do? They team up. Classic sequel. Classic, mm. classic trope of enemies becoming frenemies and working together to get rid of this new threat. Never seen that from a sequel. But to make it worse, when they go through on how they want to do it specifically, they do it at least a little bit more cleverly because yeah. they make the same kind of comedy jokes of, this is the team I've got to work with? Oh, that's really disappointing. Yeah. But they at least make the characters really shine through. This mm -hmm. time they're not just, you know, energized without motion. This time they're actually energized. There's motion to it and there's a good reason for it. Yeah. Because now, yeah, from the last movie we have some sort of idea of these characters. We don't need to be reintroduced to them. Mm -mm. But they follow through with some pretty clever gags here and there and they get a good couple of chuckles out of you. Yeah, good a good couple of chuckles but most of them are just... Ugh. They've also reused the mime... Oh, oh my, my god. god! Gag like what? Four times? Four times, yeah. Two of them were literally back to back. It was, oh, oh my god. god! Walks out of mind to door. Oh, oh my god! god. Ooh, gets smacked by the uh, the lava ice. The ball. lava ice. Yeah, ball. they 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 scienced in the movie. Science. Uh, uh, the uh, the science in this movie is such bull crap. They're like, I want you to put lava. And an ice ball so I can shoot it out of a cannon. How? How does that happen? Apparently there's some form of uh, thermal science where they could just magic the ice with some chemicals and be like, hey, now it ain't going to burn as easily from the lava. Oh, science is such bull. Science sucks. What? Yes. Yeah. This is evidence that science sucks. Now, okay, that's a controversial phrase there, my friend. A little bit. But, <laughs> sue me, I don't care. When it comes down to it, if you're going to put science in your movie, make it a bit more sound. Because, yes, they made the main bad guy sound intelligent when she was talking about how she wanted the science to happen. Yeah. But just because she sounds intelligent doesn't mean it's based in actual science. Yes, kids movie, kids science, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's still a matter of how can you get lava and ice without melting the ice. This is this movie gets science so wrong. I actually start believing time travel theory much, much more because of it. I I believe the the time travel ethics in Endgame more than I do the science in this movie. Okay, but at least they probably actually had some work put into it. Yeah, these these people didn't. Wow, it is really coming down. It's really pouring down here at the. Marcus. By the way, the Marcus Theater in Bloomington. Oh, mm. be oh beautiful. Oh, 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 yeah, that, they, they have seats that recline, guys. Yeah, they recline. Seats that recline. Yeah, th which is what we needed to sit through this. This movie actually almost put me to sleep at times. Yeah. But then I would get woken up by... A butt on the screen and somebody screaming about it. Yeah, a screaming pig... And oh, there, there's a scene where Chuck, Bomb, and Leonard, who is the lead pig, have to get past these security guards in a disguise. And 
suddenly out of nowhere, they do a breakdance scene. And I, I know the song. I know what song they used. It's the... You've seen that. You've heard that song in multiple other movies before it. It's Harold Faltermeyer from Beverly Hills Cop. It's that song. Now, see, here's the thing about that scene, though. It's like, dang! Their costume, their disguise, was horribly made. Yeah. And they are not coordinated enough as a team to get through. So what does it do? When they, What happens is it looks like they're breakdancing because they're flipping around and all this stuff inside the costume, and the costume's moving with them. So this freaking eagle turns his hat around and is like, oh, oh it's, it's on. on. And they start breakdance battling. Even when the costume rips and one of the pigs flies out of the hole in the butt. Yeah. And then jumps right back in and he's like, oh, yes. Like, what? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like they need, they feel like they need the adult humor to get through to the kids. You don't. You just don't. It's, it's so, so painful to sit through. Yeah. Most of the movie is painful to sit through, but... I and mean, it makes me what makes it even sadder is that there are some good things in it like the voice acting is alright although I still pray for Peter Dinklage his career man I mean I don't pray for Josh Gad because I mean he said yes to Frozen for God's sake hey whatever pays the bills I, I know anybody out there who liked Frozen I pray for you I'm not afraid to say it anyone excited for Frozen 2 no no I'm not I really hope to God it's worth it. No. Because if we get another song like Let It Go, oh. I'm going to end up boycotting ha Disney. Has Eric... Yeah, <laughs> not... Y you mean boycotting Sony? No. <laughs> no. We'll boycott Disney. We'll take that mouse down. Oh, yeah. You know, well, to be fair, people right now, especially now, they want the mouse's head. Everybody Especially wants the mouse's now. head on a silver platter. Yes. For those who don't know the story, we're not going to go into it, but just pray for Spider-Man, y'all. Pray for Spider-Man. Pray for the fate of Spidey in the MCU, especially yeah. after the buildup from Spider-Man Far From Home, which if you haven't seen that movie, check out our review on it, and then also check out the movie itself, because it is oh, Fant beautiful. Fantastic, yes. I'd rather go back and watch that than watch this, watch this again. Well, I will give it this, though. This movie did have a little bit of credit going for it in the fact that it had a short in the beginning called A Hair Love. Mm -hmm. And that, that was actually very, very... It good. was a really touching thing. It was about a little girl who has a big floof ball of hair that she herself can't tame. It's, the, it's sort of a bad hair day thing. But her dad tries to help her is scared because the hair is such a monstrous mess mm -hmm. and the girl pulls up this video online from when her mom was doing uh, hair love which was her you her internet channel about how to do different hairstyles mm -hmm. and she would do them on her daughter for the content and so through the video and the father and the daughter working together they were able to do her hair in the way she wanted so that when they went to visit her mom in the hospital and bring her home she could see that her daddy did her hair just like she did. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very touching, touching short. Which... It was especially touching when it you saw the mother and you looked like she just got done with chemotherapy from cancer because she had no hair on her head. Yeah, and yet, even then, the daughter still looks at her like she's the prettiest girl in the room. And hands her a picture that she drew of her now balding mother with a crown on top of her head showing that she is, mm -hmm. in fact, a pretty amazing woman and then the rest of the short after they take her out of the room is them getting back to their normal lives and practicing doing the hair as her mother's hair grows back in really symbolizing the family bonds and it actually made me tear up a little bit i almost started crying during the shorts it was I, such a touching thing i had so much respect for them for that and i think it, was, it said it was done by lion forge entertainment yeah it was so, kudos to you guys and to everybody that helped back it through the Kickstarter promotion that they had on there. Mm -hmm. Good job. That was a wonderful, amazing short. Which is more than I can say for Angry Birds, too. I really wish that would have been the movie. Yeah. Just that short, Hair Love, would have been worth the 15 bucks. It would have been worth it. 
It would have been so worth it. Yeah, but instead we have to sit through butt jokes and... Sex jokes. And outdated song sequences. Song sequences, butt jokes, sex jokes. Jokes that don't fit the bill for half of Angry Birds. Mm -hmm. I mean, what can you really do with this setup anymore? Which, I swear, if they greenlight a third one... Just, no. It's, I mean, if you have kids... Go ahead, take them to see this. They might get a kick out of it. If just be aware, you you're gonna have to suffer. If you're a parent, you're if, gonna have to suffer. If you want to see this movie just for the jokes and to see how bad it is, come prepared. Mm -hmm. Just arm yourself with whatever you can to get through this movie without dying. Because just, it's not again, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. No, 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 no. It's not far not, from it. Not by a long shot. It's, it's not even the worst film I've seen this year. But it is one of the most atrocious things to ever be put in the category of children's animation. Yeah. This is literally a few swear words away from being teenager animation. From being that kind of yeah. animation you could see being on YouTube as a spoof or something like... <laughs> we, haven't even, we didn't even get to the part about the little chicklets who actually used some swear words in this. One of them said, holy crap. Granted, in their defense, that was actually really funny because... Yeah, and that was cute. They had a B storyline, believe it or not, with three hatchlings who were just trying to play a game based on the events of the first movie. All right, that's fine enough. Then one of the kids keeps saying rocks instead of eggs because they're using rocks to, for eggs for the game. Okay, cute, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So what is one of the chick the little hatchlings do runs into her house gets her baby sister eggs as in like the three eggs that have yet to hatch that hold her baby sisters and uses them for their game and what ends up happening they get swept away by the freaking ocean so the whole b plot is literally these hatchlings trying to get back the one hatchlings baby sisters that are still unborn oh there's one part of the movie where i turn to you and i'm like what the heck were these people smoking when they made this? It's when, okay, they're about to get the eggs back, and, yet, and they get catapulted away because, of course, and where do they end up landing? On a cloud. And they're stuck there. On a cloud. What? I can't iterate that enough. What the literal heck? Clouds don't work like that. Cl no. Clouds don't work like that, people. Come on. Now, Sony Animation... I just have to know, you made Spider-Man into a Spider-Verse, yes. a phenomenal, amazing achievement in animation history, and a phenomenal movie to have Spider-Man's name attached to. And then you give us Angry Birds 2 with eggs flying and hitting a cloud and not falling through. What were you smoking? Because whatever it is, send some to us. We kind of we would kind of yeah, like to see yeah, what, we, what you're we, seeing. Yeah. If you guys ever make another Angry Birds movie, we're going to need some of that to get through it. Like, it has to come with the tickets. Here's your tickets, here's your pipe, and here's the special weed that you've been smoking. Like, oh! I don't know what's happening! Because <laughs> I swear to God, if they, do a, if they do a green light and we have to see it, yeah. and we have to do a butt review, I swear to God, if I see more than two butts in that movie... We are walking out. Gone. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what else is there? I mean, the song sequences are atrocious. The uh, the obvious moral is red, you know. You're not alone in what you do. You've got your friends and your family, no matter what. What? I mean, didn't we already do that in the first film? Yeah, they did. They rehashed the moral for the second film. Oh, Lord, they Ghostbusters 2'd it. Yup. I will say, they had a legitimately good plot twist. We find out the villain. Yeah. All right. Spoiler. The villain's name is Zeta. She's a purple scrawny eagle. Because voiced, why not? Voiced by Leslie Jones, who honestly is the only decent thing in the Ghostbusters reboot. And then her little assistant that's been like right by her side the entire film, we find out is her daughter. That was surprising. But, but then uh, yeah. we get the reveal of who the father yeah. is. Yes. Spoilers, the father is Mighty Eagle. Because apparently when they were younger in the 1990s and they were teenagers, yeah, they, 
they fell in love. And, yeah, and apparently, before they tied the knot and got hitched, they uh, they apparently had a kid out of wetlock. Yep, they had mating season a little before the season. Wow. I just like, but he didn't know because he left her at the altar on the day of their wedding. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a big coward. Yup. And so he left, but after she, you know, destroys his mountain and is planning to destroy the two islands that we had confirmed to be in the Angry Birds universe of ours, he's like, I'm sorry. By the way, I did not know I had a daughter until you just now told me. Yeah. So what does he do? After everything goes wrong and that whole villain's base goes to cinders, literally, he somehow saves his daughter. And while he's trying to revive her because she's, you know, unconscious from the explosion and being thrown across yeah. an ocean. Yeah. She wakes you up. You should be dead from that. He's shaking her, you know, not like, oh, but he's just trying to like, wake up, honey. Wake up, sweetheart. Wake up, love of my minute for the love of my life for the last minute. Like, yeah. That throwaway line is so dark. If you're gonna say that, just be yeah. like, wake up, like, sweetheart. This this movie got really uncomfortable at times. So, so many times. I mean, there's a scene when they're trying to get this card key while disguised in this outfit, and oh, oh, God. The, and Leonard is moving the head, and it makes it they make it look like they're they, they make it look like they're trying to look at the guards. Yeah. Yeah. They Just, make it look like they're trying to see the size of the guards. <laughs> his Twinkie. His fucking and, and, hose. And all I can say is, how in the blue hell is this a kid's movie? Literally, right now what we need is the Nostalgia Critics, a family picture to appear whenever that yes! scene happens. A, because we a, can change that and be like, a perverted picture. <laughs> like, a family picture. And then we look at it and it's actually a perverted picture. Because there were a couple of really awkward times where Chuck goes to tickle his sister, but his faces make it look like he's wanting something else. And it's like, no, uh, God. I mean, because it's, I mean, it's, he's voiced by Josh Gad. Are you really surprised by that? I, I'm just surprised at how they <laughs> animated this film and how the writing is. I'm just like, I mean... Uh, no, not just a family picture. We need the nostalgia critic to say, fetish movie. It's exactly what this was. This, this It's exactly what this was. This was a fetish film. And if anybody wants to sit there and say, hey, watch that language about it. It's like, it's a fetish movie from start to finish. And yes, I'm making that joke. I see that look. <laughs> yeah. That I, joke stays. I, I just now got that. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a joke. I'm making that joke because apparently they can make millions off of it, so why can't I? <laughs> it's like, screw them. Like, ugh. I, I don't know why, why Gino Reynolds lost his mind when reviewing the first Angry Birds movie. Like... Well, and see, here's the funny thing. When they're starting the movie off and they're talking about how, okay, we have a truce. We can, you know, have free time and stuff before they reveal the third island to the birds. Yeah. What does Bob and Chuck try to do? They drag Red to a speed, speed dating. dating event. But here's the problem with that. The way they make it sound and the way they animated their faces, I swear to God, it made it look like they were going to try to go for a... I don't even want to say it. What? I mean, it's, a gay it's orgy. Fan. Oh, no! Because no. They're, they're talking about, oh, he no. won't be he won't be up for it, but then they're giving him faces like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> It's like, oh! Yeah! That is, oh, why did you say that and put that in my head? Because that's what the movie was making it sound like. But then you see the speed dating, and it's just, it's an abomination. And I suppose. The faces on Chuck and Bomb all throughout this. I mean, the first, their, I, I, I will their say, faces the, the are very, nightmare. The beautiful. very first thing that Chuck says, I mean, Bomb, that Bomb says to his first speed date is, I, I, eat, like, dirt. I eat dirt. And then it cuts away from him, <laughs> then it cuts back to him, and he's somehow spitting out dirt like he just ate dirt. Yeah, he's holding a bowl of dirt. And no, no, that was after. That was after it because this was before the bowl of dirt. It's, I eat dirt. Cuts to date. 
Cuts back to him. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Oh, that's gross. And then literally the next person he's with in the speed dating is the one where he pulls the bowl of dirt out of like, where did that come from? Did he, what, did he pull that out of his butt? Well, I mean, and she's looking at him all lovingly like, oh my God, I've actually found the love of my life. Oh, and yeah. And he's sitting there going, well, I could tell what kind of bugs were in the dirt. I could tell what kinds of minerals stuff's in the dirt and da, da, da. It's like, I'm like, dang. Is that girl so dang desperate that she'll go right. for she'll like, go for bomb of all people? I will say though they did have a good visual gag for when bomb was getting ready to explode. Yeah, because they did do one good joke when it came to the uh, whole costume scene, mm. and it was the fact that when they first got the costume, it was trying to enter the evil lair. One of the guards was an idiot and is like, "Oh, you're the new guy. Okay, come on in." While the other one was sitting there thinking, "Hey, wait." That's the imposter we were literally just warned about less than three seconds ago. But nope. All right, they let him in. Walk it on and then And then cut to them doing a dancing, a victory dance. And the, the other security guard is looking at them. And when they leave, he starts popping and locking himself. He's like... He's like... He's like... God... Why? Why? Why, Sony? Because they want our money. If they want our money, make something good. Make another Spider-Verse. Last I checked, Spider-Verse movie was still in the works, right? Yeah. Make that, but make it good. And Make I, it better I than the swear, first. I swear on my life, do not give us another Angry Birds movie. Because two. Two is enough. Two and is more than enough. We shouldn't have even had one. No. We were fine with the Angry Birds shorts that we got back when Angry Birds was still a thing. I I do like how they made the, they made these movies like years after the game was even popular. They made it way after the Angry Birds craze. Because Angry Birds had the mobile games. Then it had ports to other consoles, other handhelds. It had toys. It had other companies. It had all sorts of great stuff in pop culture at the time. Mm -hmm. But then what do these people do? Seven years later, and then what? Two, three years or so after the first movie came out? Yeah. It's like, why? What's the point to it? I mean, what epic stories can you do with angry birds and pigs who try to steal eggs? I mean, you were better off leaving it as quite simply little shorts where you just had to animate the little heads of the birds and the pigs. You know why? It was simple. They didn't have to talk. You didn't need a complex story. You knew the characters for what they did. You could be like, oh, well, this bird here is your basic bird. He just flies and hits him. You got your speed bird. You shoot it. You tap it. He zooms into him. Yeah, what does this movie have? A mime bird. And it has the, oh, the huggy bird is back. Yeah, yeah but not very long. Not very long, thank God. He's only there for, like, maybe one or two scenes, and he doesn't even do his, hmm? Yeah, he doesn't even do that, thank God. But we, we get the, oh, my God. Four, Four times. times. Back to back to the final two. And it's like, seriously? Seriously? They even have an alcohol joke at the end, too. And yeah. it's just atrocious. Because it's, like we said, the villain in Mighty Eagle's Daughter. She's at the punch bowl. You hear the woman go, Debbie, get out of the punch bowl. Like, the daughter yeah, was about to try to some, drink it. It's like, like why would you? What? But did somebody, we see somebody spike the punch bowl? Right. Like, no. Why? Who do we see spike it? It's a kids movie. You shouldn't be planning on having somebody spike the punch bowl for a wedding in a kids film. Yeah, but in the la in the last frame of the movie, we have we have champagne because between red and silver. No, no, no. The bottle said cider. It's sparkling cider. It looked like champagne. I know what it looked like, but according to the movie, it would be apple sparkling cider. Then this movie is full of lies. Well, it's got birds and pigs in it. What do you expect? At least something decent to distract your children for two hours. And it doesn't even do that well. We're not that lucky. No. I mean, if, if if me and Abby were to have kids, I wouldn't show them this. No. I'd rather watch something worse with them. No. And that would be the Care Bears movie. And that's only because I watched it growing up. I watched both of them. Look at me like that all you want, Michael. The Care Bears movie was my thing. <laughs> I knew the Care Bears mythos. Did you have a Care Bear growing up? Actually, no. Did you have little plushies? No. I didn't have the plushies. I did have one of those coloring cards, though. Oh, you are such a fun giant, aren't you? 
Hey. Oh my god. Hey, hey. Hey, to be fair. Lots of hard bear. I think it was lots of heart. It's lots of hug and bear. No. I think. No. The one with the heart on his chest. Oh, lo oh, lo uh, I don't even remember them. I don't remember the names either. In the first yeah. movie, lots of, I think it's lots of hearts. Lots of hearts, I guess. The, the bear with the heart on his chest, he was one of my favorites in the first movie. Then in the second one, when they introduced the Care Bear Cousins, or vice versa, however they did it, mm -hmm. point is the Care Bear Cousins were cool, and I watched it because I just thought it was super cool. They scream one phrase, and they're shooting energy beams out of their chest. Like, I'm sorry, but as a kid, if I couldn't do the Kamehameha, mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to scream Care Bear Stare and shoot someone with a laser out of my chest. Mm -hmm. If the laser was shaped like whatever image is on my chest, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint Superman's logo on my chest, and I'm going to scream that phrase and watch the S shoot them down. Like, yes! Oh, it would have been great as a child if I would have had powers. Mm. Yeah, it would have been. It's okay, Michael. You didn't know me then. <laughs> so you get me now. I, I wish I did. I had known you. You get my crazy now after I've become an adult and oh. I've evolved to higher levels of insane. Clearly. High levels of insane here, people. Oh, yes. And That's also because this movie has psychologically broke me for a little while. It did. I'll be good by morning, hopefully. It, I mean, this movie damn near broke me. It's, it's so, all, it's like all I saw was dollar signs throughout this whole thing. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be for us, it'd be for Sony. Yeah, it wouldn't be for Sony because, I mean, even though they're trying to get money, get money now, but they gotta, they gotta take it up with the mouse. Although, I gotta say, from the articles that I have read on it, I'm kind of at an odd's end of who to root for in that battle. I'm not even gonna get into it now. I mean... I mean leave, too much back and forth, too yeah, much legality. Leave, let us know who you think is the winner in this. Sony or Disney. Who do you think is in the right? Who do you think is in the wrong? Tell us why in the comments, or even just post it on part of our page. Yeah. We honestly want to know... But before anybody asks, no, we're not going to do a video on it because we don't have all the information and we feel like if we did, it'd be far more controversial than what yeah. we want. We'll have a bunch of Disney people get mad at us or we'll have a bunch of Sony people get mad at us. And honestly, what, what we care about isn't if Spider-Man is taken out of the MCU. We just want to see him be done right. Like if he's taken out of the MCU, fine, Disney can recover. But we want to see... Tom Holland, Spider-Man, be done and done right. And not the way they did it in Amazing Spider-Man 2. No. No more rehashing of his origin to where an entire movie is dedicated to him being the whiny crybaby kid who no. just lost his uncle and has to, you know, rise the ranks to become this great hero. Because we already got that in Far From Home and they didn't even mention Uncle Ben. We got all of that from all the different Spider-Man movies they have released over the years. We want somebody to continue on this actual storyline of progression, to keep building this character and these worlds and these people that he interacts with. Yeah. Keep building these movies to be the best they can be without rehashing everything. Which is... That's okay, all we want. Which is, again, more than I can say for Angry Birds too. They like, rehashed like we, everything. Like, like We get really off, off subject when it comes to Marvel, don't we? Well, that's because Marvel's like one of the biggest things right now. Oh, yeah, especially Spider-Man. But, yep. yeah, basically, if you have kids and you want to distract them for an hour and a half, it's fine. We've seen worse. It's passable. It's it's not terrible. It's just... You can do better. Yeah. That, and, you, and you can do worse. You can take your kids to see Dora. The Dora the Explorer movie. I, I know. You, want, you need salvation after seeing that piece of garbage. Or, even worse, you can see The Lion King, which I nearly lost my sanity at the end of that screening. But, oh, I mean, yeah, you can do much worse than this. You can also do much better than this. Yeah. Like, raise your expectations a little bit. I mean, raise your standards. You, yeah. you guys deserve better. We deserve better animated films for kids. I mean... I mean, I'm worried about this upcoming generation. Oh, yeah. I mean, and movies like Angry Birds 2 and Angry Birds 1 aren't going to help it. No. I mean, the movies are just cheap cash-ins because people are going to shove their kids in front of them. I mean, 
I would much rather sit my kid down in front of the uh, Lorax movie. And that was just as bad because their message was clear, good, and bad. And the book itself is meant to be a... Anybody can be this bad or good mm-hmm. guy. Not just... Yes. Not just this kid being good and this guy with the big 90s corporation being bad. Like... Yeah. they, they You know they even did that in Mary Poppins Returns? Yeah. They freaking did that in Mary Poppins. They took Mary Poppins and gave it a clear, good, and clear, bad guy. The first one didn't have that. This movie We've, is just... God... If I can pull up every movie that does the same cliches, it does. There's something wrong. Mm-hmm. There is obviously something wrong with the people who made this and the people who are saying, yes, this is okay to show to my children. Because this upcoming generation is screwed if we keep showing them films like this. I mean, for God's sakes, we have a movie out called Good Boys, and mm-hmm. part of the trailer is them playing on a sex swing. Yeah. How long will it be before that's in an animated movie? That's only a PG or a mm-hmm. rated G. I mean, heck, go to the store, pick up a copy of one of the worst movies I've ever heard of, Norm of the North. It's going to say it's, you know, great for all ages by the Dove Foundation. Look on the back of the cover, though, and it's going to say it's PG. Because why? You have animals peeing. Peeing lemmings, yeah. And it is dedicated time to it. Not just a throwaway joke of, oh, these things are peeing. Yeah. Flashback. No, it is literally dead silent as you hear these creatures have their size of relief and the urine just keep on coming like this movie is just this is our version of Norman the North's peeing lemmings because it's just dedicated time to garbage yes mm-hmm. you've got your moments where it stops and you're spared the atrocities but then it picks right back up yeah this is 80% atrocity is 20% okay comedy for the kids. But, like, like we said, you ki- kids out there deserve better. You deserve movies like the Disney Renaissance films, like the animated Lion King and ma- maybe maybe even Little Mermaid. Heck, some animated, animated films today I really, really enjoy. Like, I love Into the Spider-Verse. That's I a lo- great one. I mean, even... Another good one that I feel is very, very overlooked is Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt is From always Dr- overlooked. Back yes. when Dreams work, DreamWorks was good. Okay. And now we, we have films like, I mean, I pray that Spies in Disguise is good. It's got Tom Holland and Will Smith. I've got high hopes. I have, I have hopes. And, oh, we still haven't brought up the fact that one of the trailers that we saw before the movie began was a trailer for the Playmobil movie. Yeah. The Playmobil movie. The the company that made toddler toys and it's called Playmobil the movie. And I know what it's trying to do. It's trying to do what, what? the Lego movie did. Yep. But the funny thing is, we get Daniel Radcliffe playing the main character. Oh it? yeah, that makes it better. Hey, hey, hey. You never know. He might just magically pull out a wand and be like, Espeliamus! And kill the movie. Just be like, No! You deserve better. I said I've kept saying that we deserve better ever since he said yes to Sorcerer's Stone. Hey, maybe Daniel Radcliffe got smart after the Harry Potter franchise ended. You never know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, you, you got to give the man credit. He was dedicated to that role in Harry Potter, and he made a hell of a lot of money from it. Yeah, he did. Now he is getting into other roles. Maybe this is his time to just we try to. We re-find apologize, his... Harry Potter fans. Not really, but anyway, to save some of our viewership and probably gain some <laughs> I do know the, a little bit of the Harry Potter mythos yeah. I like the movies it would have to be a slight chance I'd have to get back in the books just because I've had people ruin the books by being those overhyped fans yeah. trying to trash it when changes were made and I know some stuff is now considered non-canon because J.K. Rowling tweets a bunch of stuff randomly enough but yeah Point is, Playmobil movie looks like it's going to suck. The only redeeming factor is it might have uh, Daniel Radcliffe, since he's playing the main character. Mm-hmm. Angry Birds 2, distract your kids long enough for you to have a minute of breathing time. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, garbage. Yeah, sorry. My mom was gone. I mean, it's okay. My phone went off because Ariel's texting yeah. me. But, yeah. I mean... Wow. Yeah, we deserve much better than this. We deserve another Into the... Sp- but yeah, I mean, 
like I said, we're, we're growing, we're becoming more intelligent and we cannot just sit here and say, this is okay for us. Right. We have to actually say we want better movies. And honestly, if they keep trying to give us garbage like this, the industry is going to go in the toilet because nobody's going to want to see it. They might go see it to make jokes out of it, but the people are still going to make their money back. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't make all their money back and then a bigger profit, they'll still keep pumping it out because they think that's what people want. The whole point of movies and film in general is because it's an art. It's a way to express yourselves. But if you're going to express yourself by giving someone garbage, what does that really say about how you feel about the company? Like, I know a lot of artists, and their work is really good stuff. Mm -hmm. But when they're not given the time to really make something that they're passionate about, it's going to be garbage, whether it's just to them alone or to someone else. And we can honestly say that this film... Angry, it's garbage. Angry Birds 2 is garbage. Because it's to some people, it will be art. To some people, it'll be art on how bad a movie can be or how how not to make a movie, something yeah. like that. But yeah, to some, us... Something like The Room or, or or like Birdemic, which I have yet to see. Don't. And or an even recent example, like The Live Action Lion King. That's a great example of how not to make a movie. Right. I mean, okay... For me to say it in any nice way, I would like my movie, even if it is a kid's movie, to be intelligent. Because we know cartoons can do that. Mm -hmm. Gravity Falls. Yes. Steven Universe. Eh. Yeah, later seasons, pal. You have to get in later seasons. I haven't seen any of them. The later seasons are really amazing, and the new movie looks really good. I Point is, Gravity that. Falls, Steven Universe, Star in the Forces of Evil, and so many other cartoons have come out in recent years on all different platforms that are meant for kids and tell great morals within every episode, if not over entire seasons long. Mm -hmm. And it's treating your child not only like a child and how it's a bright and colorful world that they can get lost in. But it's but also it, treating you... Inte as, intellectually. It, it treats it, your child smart. It treats your child like an adult, which I think a good kid's show or movie should do. I mean, you have these kids learning about tough life things... But they're doing it in a way that's entertaining. Like, for one example, in Steven Universe, one of our main characters who prides herself on being perfect in everything that she does, there is one day where she goes berserk because she's trying to train one of the main character, Steven's friends, to not only fight with a sword, but to be willing to die for him should the day come because she wants everyone to be perfect because she feels like she's failed in protecting the one person she loved most in all the world. And she projects that so much onto one person that when it comes clear to what's going on, mm -hmm. she mentally breaks down and they don't cover it up by saying that she's just sad and that she's fine two seconds later. Yeah. They deeply analyze it, treating your child intellectually but still making it entertaining enough to where you're not sitting there cringing. You're actually invested in what these characters are going through. And Gravity Falls did it so much so much better than half the content I can think of. Yeah. In terms of what Disney has promoted, in yeah. terms of what Disney has done. Yeah. Because I mean I love I still love Gravity Falls. And lately I do believe that Disney has gone down the crapper with these live action reboots and and whoever made Angry Birds 2, they're going down the crapper as well. And it's, I want them to come, I want these companies to come back. I want them to give us smart, good, intelligent stuff. And we're not, and we're not getting it. It's like, I don't know, it feels like these companies are just treating us, uh, treating us and kids like we're stupid. And all they care about is, is the money. Yes. And let me tell you, they won't be making any money until they start finding out, hey, you have to treat your audience intelligently for them to want to return. Mm -hmm. Which, having said that, your time is better spent elsewhere. Your money is better spent on a different movie. If you want to put this on for your kids and take them to it because it's a animated film, more power to you. Otherwise, don't even bother. Nope. So, as I always do, like we always do, I'm giving Angry Birds 2 thumbs two thumbs, thumbs down. down. Two thumbs down from two dudes review.
So Angry Birds, you guys go back to your nests because you are not wanted here. Make better content, yeah. please. You guys can do good yes. work and we've seen it. Mm -hmm. Bring that passion back. We want, we want another renaissance in animation. We don't want corporate chill anymore. We are growing, but you guys are not. And that's exactly what I saw in that movie. But again, having said that, two thumbs down. I'm Zach Watson. And I'm Michael Eaton. And this has been Two Dudes Review. And please give us better stuff. It's all we can ask. So until next time, take care, guys.